More and more Americans are growing frustrated with government. We see the ideological distance between political parties grow wider. We see unwillingness to compromise, and we see politicians become, quite frankly, uncivil toward those who disagree with their beliefs. What do you see as the solution to restore our fellow citizens' trust in government? Robin, that's a great question. It's very timely. Um, I think that we need to see our elected officials acting in mature and responsible and respectful ways towards one another and putting their own self-interest and the interest of um, of special interests aside and work toward the common good. There is a lot that needs to be done in our country and we want to see uh, responsible leadership and we want them to lead by example. And I also believe that right now there are a lot of people, particularly at the congressional level, who are afraid to come and meet with their own constituents. And that's because there are a lot of constituents who are angry and they don't want to face that anger and frustration from their constituents. However, I believe that if a, an elected official is proactive and is listening to and responding to the concerns and needs of their constituents, you can, uh, you can avoid that type of um, negative uh, relationship between your own voters. And so I would be the type of person who would always be in contact with my, with my constituents and who would listen and respond. And I think being proactive rather than evasive and reactive goes a long way. That question sounds like it's more pertinent for um, Washington politics than Richmond politics. And we all know that, that uh, Washington government is a little bit dysfunctional these days. In Richmond, most folks would be surprised at how much cooperation there is among both parties and among all the people in the General Assembly. Uh, we get along pretty well. It doesn't mean that we're going to convince each other to swing, swing over or switch sides on anything. And, and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the budget's a good example. Every budget is a compromise. And we're required by law to pass a balanced budget. We can't do that uh, with one party making all the decisions about it. So I think, I think in Richmond there's a lot more cooperation than most folks realize. As far as what we do about it, uh, it's unfortunate. And I, and I think, in, this last session when we saw uh, the governor veto so many bills uh, and, and his party line up behind him to sustain those vetoes, it was a little bit disappointing because that, that further creates this partisan divide. Some of those folks had voted for the bills that he vetoed, but then hung with him to uh, sustain the veto. So things like that are, are critical uh, when you talk about the partisan divide, and, and I don't know how you fix that exactly. So hopefully there is a solution. Uh, well, I think that a general untrust of the government might be a good thing. I, I don't necessarily think that trust in the government is the best route, but I do believe in civil discourse, civil uh, conversation in regards to politics. And I think that our two-party system has really caused this, is that it's left versus right, red versus blue, and so we get this tribalism with these two parties uh, that we have created, and they have a monopoly over the political uh, system uh, with gerrymandering, with other uh, barriers to entry for third-party candidates such as myself. We have to spend a lot more time, a lot more effort uh, just to run for office. And, and then we have um, a lot of people that are already in the mindset that the two parties are the only parties that they can vote for. And so it's just created, a, uh, I, I believe, a toxic environment um, and, and quite frankly I don't, I don't really enjoy uh, politics because of how um, polarized it's become. And so I think that if, if we, um, us as Americans, look at the two parties and realize that they have not uh, really done much difference, all they do is really just uh, bash heads in, in public, but then they do come together when it's things that really do not benefit us. The Woodrow Wilson Candidate Forum has been brought to you by the Peace and Financial Group because we know the best choices are made when you have reliable, accurate information. At Peace and Financial, we work hard to ensure our clients make well-informed, smart financial decisions. Peace and Financial, with offices in Stanton and Charlottesville, wants to remind you that Tuesday, November 7th is Election Day.